That's apparently not the right reference. Uh, Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus came not so that people would say, oh, you're God, you're wonderful, you're amazing, how great you are. Look, it's Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. Look at him, look at him, he's wonderful. Jesus, do you need anything? Are you hungry? Oh, you're God's son. Do you you want a chicken? I can kill the chicken and make you some dinner. Do Do you want some pomegranates? Can I get you something, Jesus? He says, I didn't come here so that people would wait on me hand and foot and and fall all over me i came here to lay my life down and to serve other people that's why jesus when he came he washed the feet of his friends he said let me serve you i took off his his coat and he got down on his knees and he scrubbed their poopy dirty nasty feet because he came to serve to give his life as a ransom for many um and so the word for life in that verse is, uh, is, again, it's suke, to give his soul, his breath. When he was hanging on the cross, he gave up his very life as a ransom for many, for you and for me. So when God tells us to love him with all of our soul, he's telling us to love him with our very life. To be willing to lay our life down, to give up our life, even as our brothers and sisters are doing around the world. I I mean, in India, I was reading in Voice of the Martyrs, uh, in just a period of two months, five Christians were murdered in India for the simple fact that they loved Jesus. And their community, their, um, in India, there's been a rise in uh, nationalism connected with uh, Hinduism. And so now the slogan is, to be Indian is to be Hindu. If you're not Hindu, then you're not a true Indian. If you're not Hindu, then you've betrayed the country. And so these Christians, five of them in two months, were murdered just because they weren't Hindu, but they loved Jesus Christ. And they loved Jesus with their soul, with their life. They were willing to lay down everything. And one man, as he had been beaten repeatedly by the townsfolk, um, these, the, the radical men of the village came again to get him and they found him and as he's being dragged away from his wife he told her i might die tonight but even if i do don't stop loving jesus that was his those were his last words to his wife and he was dragged away and he was murdered and he loved the lord with his soul but you and i we don't we may not be murdered for our faith but we can still love Jesus with our soul. When, when we put other people ahead of ourselves, when we spend that quality time with the Lord, we're loving him with our life. I mean, what is the same thing you and I, we've all been given, is 24 hours every day. We've all been given a certain amount of time. We, I don't have any more time today than you, and you don't have any less time today than your spouse or your child or your parent. We all have the same amount of time today. That's our life. And when we use that time to seek the Lord, to serve people, to to understand Him better, we're loving Him with our soul, with our breath, with each breath that we have. We're giving of our life to the Lord. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your character, your attitude, your desires. Love the Lord your God with your soul, with your breath, with your lifespan, with the way that you use your time. And then he says, and love the Lord your God with all your mind. Mind, the Greek word is dianoia. The normal word for mind is nous. It comes from that second part, noia. Um, but dia means through, it means deep, it means to, to, to all the way through something. And so this is like to think something deeply, to think something through. This is your understanding, your imagination, the way that you uh, think about things, the, the way that you process things, the disposition of your mind. It's about your attitude and what you think about throughout the day. You see, that's where we run into a lot of trouble is, is there is a, a tape, and that's old language, a cassette tape, if you remember that. For some of you, I should say eight track. Uh, for a few of you, I should say record player. Um, but there, there, there is a, a record or an eight track or a tape or a CD or, or maybe a podcast that's running through your brain. And it, it, you're hearing the same thing all day long because it's on repeat cycle. 
And, and it might sound a little bit something um, like, man, I... What are they thinking about me right now? I bet that they are thinking that, I, that I'm ridiculous, that I look funny. I bet that they're thinking that I'm fat. Oh, man, I've got this, this stain on my shirt, and I bet everybody's looking at it right now. And, and oh, I, man, I, you know, your tape deck, your, your track that is con- constantly going through your mind might be this self-conscious thinking about yourself all the time. Or it, it, it might be, man, that dirty rotten, I bet that guy, I bet he's cheating on his wife if I know anything. I know that that guy is not faithful. Oh, look at that clerk. I bet that clerk is stealing something out of the cash register every night. He looks like the ki- type. I know the type. That looks like, oh, look at that Uber driver. I'm not getting in the car with that guy. Talk about a creep. And you might be tearing people down. And that's just sort of the the track that's going through your mind all the time. But all of us, we have this way that we process, this way that we think, the way that we view the world. And it, it has to do with the inner voice inside of us. It might be all tangled up in lust. It might be all tangled up in greed. It might be all tangled up in, in fear of what other people are thinking. But it's the same day in and day out. And it gets old. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Is that going to come up? Oh, hey! They're darkened. So this is, a, in Ephesians chapter 4, he's talking about uh, us apart from Jesus. Us apart from being made new in Christ. He says, they are darkened in their understanding. The understanding is that dia nue. It's that, that word for mind. Darkened in the way that they understand things. Alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them due to the hardness of their heart, the cardia. You see, apart from Jesus, we are hardened and separated. We don't understand the truth about God, and our mind is just bent towards evil. Uh, this isn't in the slides, but Colossians 1.21, it says, And you who once were alienated, set separated, and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, that we were separated from God with our minds. But God came to redeem our minds so that we could love him with all of our minds as well. In Hebrews 10, 16, is a promise from the Lord about how he will renew us. It says, this is the covenant, the promise that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts, cardia, and write them on their minds, dianoi. He says, I am going to take what is good and right, and I'm going to put it inside of you. I'm going to renew your mind. I'm going to change the way you think. I'm going to change the way you understand. I'm going to change the tape deck that you hear constantly in your mind so that we now are able to understand God and understand his love for us. 1 John 5.20 says that we know that the Son of God has come and has given us Uh, understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son jesus christ is the true god and eternal life jesus has come to give us understanding so that we could know him so we could know and love god well we can't know god apart from god changing our mind we can't love god with our minds apart from god rewiring the way that we think so we needed to come to God and ask the Lord, change the way that we think, change the, the way that we uh, rationalize, the things that we imagine throughout the day, the things that we focus on, and help us to focus our hearts and our minds on you instead and to really understand you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 says that this is partly up to us each day, therefore preparing your minds for action. What that means is girding the loins of your minds. Have you ever any, seen anybody gird their loins before? Uh, to gird your loins, in case you're wondering, the loins is the middle part of your body. I'm not going to like point or anything, but the loins are the middle part of your body. And to gird your loins, it's talking about your belt, right? And so they used to wear a long robe. And to run, if you've ever tried to run in your bathrobe, it's a little difficult. And so what you got to do is you got to gather up. What they would do is they would gather up their robe, pull it up, and tuck it into their belt so that they could run and move freely. And so the Bible is saying, gird the loins of your mind. So in your thinking, tuck in everything, get rid of the the extraneous stuff that's going to trip you up, that's going to make you stumble, and prepare yourself for action. Preparing your minds for action, getting your mind ready to think clearly, being sober-minded, Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That means that in our life, the tape deck that should be playing in our minds, the podcast that should be on repeat in our heads, 
is Jesus loves me and is coming back for me, and I have a hope and a future with Jesus. Jesus cares about me. Jesus has good things in plan for, plan for me and in store for me. Jesus is coming back someday, and I'm going to be with him forever and ever, and this life is just temporary, and the things that I'm suffering through right now, they're not going to last forever, but Jesus has made everything good and new in the new creation and new heaven, and he's coming, and I can't wait. And that when I, when I go out and I meet people throughout the day or I go to work, I say, you know what, this is just for right now, but Jesus is coming back and I've got hope in him and I want to make sure other people know about the hope that's in Jesus and I want to make sure that other people know about the love that Jesus has because he's coming back. When we set our minds fully on the hope that is in store for us, we are renewing our minds. We're preparing our minds for action. It's saying, when I'm focused on the fact that Jesus could come back at any moment, I am ready to share Jesus at any moment. I am ready to give out the good news of Jesus at any moment. And my mind is not focused on what is everybody else thinking about me or what do I have on my shirt. And my mind isn't focused on chewing other people down. Instead, my mind is focused on the fact that Jesus has loved me and given me grace and he has given me and he's coming back soon and other people need to know. That's what it means to have your mind renewed and to love God with all of your mind, is to focus your mind on His grace and His truth, His return, His goodness. And then that last word, love the Lord your God with all your strength. The word for strength is iskus, and it just, there's a lot of words for power and strength in Greek. And this particular word is talking about the gun show. Okay, there should have been a little bit more of a laugh there, okay? I, I, there we go, there, thank you, thank you, yeah, which, 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 which way is the beach? Is it that way or that? You know what I mean? Right, this is, this is the word for strength here. It's talking about physical strength, the, the vitality and energy that's inside of you. And so you might be like that scrawny little dude uh, right there, or you might be more like me, you know, the, the shadow, be, okay, uh, the shadow behind. But, but regardless of what strength, physical strength you have, you use that energy, you use that vitality, you use you, the, the, the power that the Lord has given you to serve him well, to love him well, to give to him. Um, that, that word for strength, it also uh, is used for your ability. And some of you have terrific ability, like um, June has terrific ability as a seamstress, right? And she loves the Lord as a seamstress with all her strength. Right? There's mighty June. She's back there using her ability and using her skill to love the Lord with that. Right? Just uh, like Andy loves the Lord as a blacksmith. And so he went out to Mongolia a couple years ago and used that skill as a blacksmith to teach other people there who are just coming to Christ to know how to make things out of metal. And so he was using his ability to love Jesus. Right? Uh, that's the same way as like... Um, well, who else? Uh, Ken. Uh, Kent used his ability uh, in paving stones to help us. Well, there's a ton of volunteers out there. And we will all work together. Kent kind of showed us what to do, and we all worked together and got those pavers laid out. Or how Judy uses her gift at hospitality um, to, to help us with the potlucks that we do so often or the decorating here in the church. And so people have this strength, the energy, either whether that's a young man like Malachi or DeAndre who helped me shovel the snow to get the walkway ready in, or whether that's uh, the ability of a seamstress or a hostess. But you use your strength and your ability to love the Lord. In Scripture, we see this... Uh, um, well... I just think this is so cool. Uh, in Hebrew, the word is moad. And, uh, and what the word literally means, because this is a quote from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6, verse 5. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, uh, strength, and mind. And the word for strength there is the word for very. Like um, the king had very many soldiers, very. Or he had a, a great amount of wealth, great. Like it's this word for uh, a comparis comparing one thing to another and saying there's a lot, right? A superlative. And so that's the word is love the Lord your God with all your very, <laughs> with all your exuberance, with all your abundance, with all that bubbles up inside of you. Love the Lord your God with all that is inside of you, all your diligence and energy and passion. Again, this isn't something that we do on our own. But 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, 
It says that whoever speaks should speak as one who speaks the oracles of God. And whoever serves, we're talking about serving the Lord with our, with our gifts and our abilities, as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. It's not something that comes from us, but it's the strength that God gives us. That same word, uskos. Um, and you see it again in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. We're, called, we're told to be strong in His might. Um, and so what we find in all of these words is that if we are going to, to, to know and to love Jesus well, if, if we're going to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our emotion, our attitude, as we love people and pour out that love, that physical touch on other people and experience that, that intimacy in the Lord uh, where he touches us emotionally, um, uh, physically almost through his spirit in us, if, if we are to love the Lord with all of our soul, our very life, giving him our quality time, the breaths, the seconds, the hours that God has given us, if we are to love the Lord with all of our mind, our, our words of affirmation, the thoughts, the process, the words that roll through our mind all the time, the things that we think about throughout the day, if we are to love the Lord our God with our words and our thoughts, if we are to love the Lord our God with all of our strength, the, the gifts of our abilities as we give back to him, and the acts of service as we serve those around us, us. If we are to love the Lord our God with all that we are, we're going to need his help. We can't do it on our own. It's impossible for me to love the Lord my God with my attitude and my thoughts and my feelings and my time and my energy unless he does it in me. And that, that's why we started last week with the love that God has for us. We know what true love is because we know how much God loved us. And until you understand how much God loves you and cares about you, until you uh, begin to grasp that which is beyond understanding, the love of Jesus, how deep and how, how deep and how high and how wide is that love, then we aren't able to love back the way that we should. But as we come to the Lord and say, here I am, give me a new heart, Write your law on my mind. Help me to serve with your strength. I give up my soul so that I could keep it for eternity with you. I surrender all that I am and I need to be made new. I need an upgrade. Until we get to that point, we can't love the Lord as we should. And that's what you see in the world around you. A bunch of people who have the image of God inside of them trying to do good, but failing. Trying to change the way they think, but failing. Trying to change the way they feel and their attitude, but failing. Because we need the Lord to give us an upgrade, to transform us from the inside out and make us a new person on the inside. That's the only way we can love Him with all that we are and have, and fulfill the greatest command in Scripture. <laughs> so the greatest command in Scripture is, come to me and be transformed into a new person so that you can really love me and love others the way you're supposed to. So that you can stop beating yourself up, stop being trapped in your own inadequacies, and begin to live life in my strength and my power. If you want that for yourself, to be a new creation, a new person, who loves the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, to get free of the old tape deck that keeps playing in your mind, and to love from the core of who you are, God can do that in you. It's something that happens all at once and over your lifetime. All at once, God comes in and makes your spirit alive and gives you this hunger and thirst for him. And over a lifetime, he teaches you how to gird up the loins of your mind, how to lay down your soul. If you want to start that journey today, then you just ask him, would you raise your hand and let me know, and we can pray together right now. And God can make you a new creation. 
give you a new heart and a new mind and teach you how to love. Would you raise your hand? And for anybody who might be watching online, would you all repeat with me? Heavenly Father, I need your help. I need to be made new. I'm broken. Please make me whole. Through Jesus. I pray for a new heart and a new mind. Please forgive me for my sin and give me a desire for you. Help me to love like you love. In Jesus' name. Father, may you be our dad. And may your son, Jesus, Jesus, may you be our king, our brother, our savior, our friend. Even as you laid down your soul, your life on that cross, teach us to lay down our life for you to put you above every idol in our life and in so doing to be made whole a new creation a new humanity all that you envisioned when you knit us together in our mother's womb and may we love you not in part but in whole with all we are and have in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, well, just want to thank again uh, those uh, families brought those babies forward. And uh, it looks like we might be doing another baby dedication in March. So if you're interested in that, I had a couple other people come to me at the last minute. Um, then uh, just let me know and, and we'll plan another one of those. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, Love you guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Let's fulfill the greatest commandment, not in our strength, but in God's strength. Amen? Be blessed. <laughs>